think that my son Jordan would be really, really proud of me, really proud of just um, standing up for people, standing up for people that I live among every single day and just wanting to make sure that they live a good quality of life. Democrats now backing Lucy McBath for the 6th Congressional District seat after spending nearly $60 million on their last candidate, John Ossoff. Karen Handel has held the seat since Tom Price's short stint as Secretary of Health and Human Services when he resigned that seat. Welcome back. We're now turning our attention to the 6th Congressional District with our experts here, Rashad Ritchie, um, David Johnson, some political analysts. It includes voters from Cobb, Fulton, DeKalb, which is really a, a diverse district. Some polls coming out showing that not a lot of folks still know who Lucy McBath is. Former Delta flight attendant, never really in politics. Her son was killed in 2012 in a controversial act of gun violence believed to have been a hate crime. And uh, she's now a big advocate for gun control. Karen Handel, well-known political figure in Georgia. Um, Handel has been Secretary of State and a former Chairman of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners. So everybody knows her. They know her. She beat John Ossoff, uh, who poured millions into his campaign. What do we see about this race right now? What, what's it looking like for these two candidates, two women going head to head? It's a very tight race right now. And this is one of the races nationally that I'm looking at. If the Democrats can take this race, it means we're not just looking at them taking over the House. We're looking at this blue wave, this blue tsunami they've been talking about. Because Karen Handel should be far ahead, and she isn't. That's why we're seeing the Democrats take a second look, concentrating on this race. And part of the problem is it's the anger we're seeing among female suburban voters yet again that's hurting Karen Handel and helping Lucy McBeoff. And Rashad, I love what you said about you know, the incumbent should still be in office. It shouldn't be a problem for her. Yeah, this should be an easy victory for Karen Handel, but the Handel campaign, they underestimated Lucy McBath. Um, I've had the pleasure of interviewing Lucy McBath on multiple occasions, external of politics, and she's a real connector. So when she talks to people, there's a, there's a dynamic there that doesn't exist with Karen Handel. Um, I do believe this is a race to watch. I'm not sure if I would say this is part of the blue wave um, that is yet to be determined. But this is one of those races where it's, it's a district that did not perform well for Trump. Remember, this was a Republican district that actually underperformed for President Trump when he, when he ran. So there's a lot of room here for moderate votes to go back and forth. And you've met Karen Handel. What, have, oh, yeah. what's her, what are your interviews like with her? Um, so I haven't interviewed her, but I met her multiple times. Uh, she's way more standoffish uh, than the typical uh, politician in the state of Georgia. And that's saying a lot, actually. David? Even so, that, um, she's very uh, talented, very skilled in Georgia politics. But the reason I say that this is a race to watch, this is the type of uh, race that's more the tipping point. Democrats don't need this uh, district to take over the majority. If they take over a district like this, this means other ones that moderate Republicans or so-called moderate Republicans, Romney-like Republicans are holding across the country are at risk. These are more second-tier races that th was never on the radar for Democrats. And that means that we're looking at a bad night in the House for uh, Republicans. Now, we've not looked at early voting and the numbers, uh, historic numbers we're seeing at this point right. in Georgia. What does that look like for any of the candidates? Well, it's hard to tell because both bases are energized. Uh, if you look at some of the numbers, it favors Republicans. But if you look at some of these new voters that Stacey Abrams has really concentrated on, they're way up compared to previous elections. I'll say this. You have 159 counties in the state of Georgia. There's one county that stands out and to me gives a real indication of who has the most energy. It is DeKalb County. DeKalb County is, uh, has the highest per capita ratio of Democratic voters in the state of Georgia. This time, four years ago, DeKalb County early voting was at about 50,000. Today, is at about 100,000. Right. Wow. You have a doubling of the electorate. Those are Democratic and progressive voters in DeKalb County. And if there's uh, any indication here, of the large electorate, that means Democrats have the energy. But we have to remember too, traditionally Democrats vote early and it's on election day when Republicans come back to win. I will say this, I just got a text from, it says, this is President Trump, and we've not shown that you've gone and voted early. 
exactly. What is that? <laughs> it's something new that everybody's uh, <laughs> contacting on text. I mean, we were all upset about the robocalls. Well, guess what? Now they're attacking me on text. <laughs> oh, yeah. my goodness. All right. We're going to take a break here. <laughs> when we come back, there are several Senate and congressional seats up for grabs as well. We're going to see how our analysts look at what party may be warming those seats. We've been kind of getting into that a little bit. We're going to have that more when we come back.